the heads of anti-corruption agencies from around Africa are meeting in Rwanda this week to discuss strategies to overcome challenges in the recovery of stolen assets. Statistics from the World Bank indicate that the continent loses at least 148 billion US dollars every year to corruption. We'll have that story in the moment. But in the meantime, Peter. Thanks. Uh <laughs> Colin, yes indeed. In fact, let's uh, join Sarah Kamani about that right now. Uh, Sarah, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us. Um, all right, so uh, illicit financial flows, a big, big issue, uh, one that people like uh, former President Thabo Mbeki has been championing for years. Um, what's being said at this conference to deal with this enormous task? Well, indeed, it is a big issue, and uh, it is uh, the main issue that they will be discussing. How do those stolen assets return to the continent, and what is it that is standing in the way of bringing those assets to the country, to the continent. It now uh, emerges that uh, international banks are indeed standing in the way, according to uh, speakers who have been uh, uh, giving their views early this morning at the conference. They have also spoken about uh, laws in various countries. Uh, they have also spoken about uh, uh, countries, some countries lacking the political will because the political leadership is deep uh, in this corruption. But now they will be discussing how the continent can, from now on, speak with one voice if it means uh, having uh, uniform laws uh, to be able to repatriate these funds and stolen assets. But interestingly, they're not only talking about money, but they're also talking about things like artifacts uh, that are stashed away in foreign countries. Give us a sense of who's sitting at the table, who's uh, at this gathering. We have uh, heads of anti-corruption commissions from across the continent. We have members of the civil society organizations, including uh, uh, Transparency International, Open Society, uh, some of those who have been ra real crusaders in the fight against corruption on the continent. We expect that leaders of government will be joining later on in the week, uh, all of them, to be able to continue with the discussion. But also, uh, by Sunday, when they leave here, they expect uh, to come up with a draft uh, commitments that they will now take back to their heads of state and they will be using them now to go forward when they come to the African Union uh, meeting in January next year. This is what they will be tabling as one of the uh, recommendations on how the continent can move forward in terms of bringing funds uh, that have been stolen back to the continent. Is there a general sense of optimism that this gathering will actually bear fruit? Because I, for as long as I can remember, there have been discussions about this issue for many, many years. Well, uh, you sense uh, commitment by word of mouth, but uh, when it gets to actions is when then you find that there are still real issues. For example, the World Bank talks about uh, out of the money that has been stolen and, and, and has, they have money to, countries have money to trace this money and get banks to freeze this money, about $1.4 billion has been frozen in various international banks across the world. Out of that, just $140 million has returned to the continent. There is also the issue of when this money gets to the continent, how is it used? Because in countries like Nigeria, there have been complaints that uh, the money and the loot uh, that was repatriated, that had been uh, stolen by a former president, Sani Abacha, most of it is said to have been misappropriated. So uh, it is uh, one thing to recover this money. It is one thing to get the money back to the continent but how this money is eventually used is what now is also a big question and whether uh, some of the people sitting in these high positions in African governments will indeed be willing to see money that they themselves have stolen being repatriated back to the continent. All right, Sarah, that's where we're going to leave it for the time being. But uh, thanks very much indeed uh, for coming through. Let's hope um, when we chat again next uh, that uh, some concrete steps will have been put on the table and we can discuss those. Thanks so much indeed. That's uh, our reporter, Sarah Kamani, at the AU conference looking at illicit financial flows. A very big issue. Lots of our money disappearing from the continent uh, using these routes.